Holy Thursday Mass is one of my top four favorite Masses throughout the year. I enjoy this liturgy, and I enjoy it for, for many reasons. One, it is, it's a beautiful liturgy, emphasizing the Eucharist and the priesthood. Usually, the church is full, but it's full with those who really want to be here, not with those they feel they have to come, but those who really want to be here. And so the singing is great, the responses are, are loud, and everyone just joins in, and you feel that joy and that devotion that is present in the celebration that evening. But this year, as we all know, it's, it's very different. The church is empty. The music, although very well done and beautiful, is not quite the same when we only have four people singing instead of 400 singing. And most of all, most of all, I miss all of you, that you're not here with me this evening to celebrate this beautiful, beautiful liturgy and this amazing weekend of celebrations. Father Greg and I are our priests, and we are priests to serve our people. And we are missing contact with you and the sharing of our ministry with you. We feel that absence maybe tonight above all nights so far because of what we celebrate this evening. Celebrating the Eucharist and being a priest without people and without feeding them somehow seems, well, not exactly wrong, but maybe the right words are hollow or empty, that it just is not the same. But here we are, Holy Thursday, celebrating these two amazing gifts of Eucharist and priesthood. And as we, we listen to our readings this evening, both in our second reading and in the Gospel, we are reminded several times of the fact that this is the night on which Jesus had been betrayed. And betrayed not by an enemy, but betrayed by one of his closest friends. St. Paul, in our second reading in his letter to the Corinthians, tells us that Jesus' response to this betrayal is to give us the Eucharist. And St. John in the Gospel tells us that Jesus' response to this betrayal is to wash the feet of his disciples. Eucharist and humble service. This is Jesus' response to being betrayed. And hopefully, Eucharist and humble service also sum up the life of priests. We know, we know very sadly that that's not true for every priest, that not all priests offer their lives for the Eucharist or for humble service. But my dear friends, the vast, vast, vast majority do. There's a few bad apples. But the vast majority of priests give their lives for the Eucharist and to humbly serve the people of their parish. Priests are ordained to celebrate the Eucharist and to serve God's holy people by forgiving their sins, by preaching the gospel, by tending to them when they are sick or in despair, by preparing them to receive God's gifts of the sacraments. So pray for your priests. Pray for all priests. We need your prayers because I can tell you we're also feeling very lost. We're feeling very lost. We don't know how to serve you right now, other than putting 
mass on the computer other than sending out an electronic bulletin every week. We don't know how to serve you. This is new for us. They didn't teach us this in the seminary, how to serve in isolation and in pandemics. We didn't get a course on that. And so it's hard for us too, because that which we have been ordained to do, we can't do. And so we need your prayers. Know that we, we pray for all of you. We pray for your health. We pray for your safety. And we pray for the growth in your relationship with God. That even in these confusing and difficult times, we pray that you are still growing closer to the Lord each and every day, trying to love and serve him more and more. That's what we do as priests. We bring you to the Lord and we join your hand with his and then get out of the way so that God can do his work. And we keep trying, even in isolation, even in pandemics, to be the best priests we can be and to serve that humble service the best we can. You know, Father Greg will be a priest one year in about three weeks from now. So we want to congratulate him as we draw closer to his anniversary. It's been a special, it's always a special privilege to have newly ordained priests among us. One, because they have lots of energy and lots of desire to work and the pastor can just sit back and let them do all the work. That's great for the pastor. But it, it's a joy it's a real joy to watch young priests grow into this ministry of celebrating the Eucharist and of humble service. And Father Greg, it's been our joy as a parish to be able to share in your first year of priestly ministry, of seeing you grow into the celebration of the Eucharist, into this new way of living and serving God and his people. I'm sure you're all aware that it's around this time of year that priestly moves come out. Well, they came out at noon today. We received the email today with all the priest moves. And it seems like a strange time, but it's better to hear it from us than to just hear it on the street that St. Anne's will have a move in priests this year. Father Greg will be leaving us this year, and he has been reassigned as the associate pastor of St. Joseph's in Guelph. So the moves are a little later this year because of the struggle. So mid-July, uh, Father Greg will be leaving us to go and serve in Guelph. And so we, we wish Father God's greatest blessings as he continues this life of Eucharist and humble service. I also ask you to pray in a special way for seminarian Kevin. He's not a priest yet, but he's working towards it. And seminarian Kevin will also be leaving us probably right around that same time, who knows, maybe even on the exact same day, mid-July, in order to have a bit of holidays first and then to continue his studies for the preparation to the priesthood. And as it's an honor to share in that first year of a priest ministry, so it's really an honor to share in the formation of someone preparing to be a priest, to be able to help them to come to know the Lord and to know God's people and to, to learn how to reach out in that humble service. So, Kevin, we too uh, pray for you and assure you of our prayers. And I want you to know that you will always have a home here at St. Anne's, that you're always very welcome to come, to visit, to be with us, that we want you to consider St. Anne as your home, even after you leave us and return to the seminary. Priesthood and Eucharist, they just go together. They just go together. These are the two gifts that Jesus gave the world in response to being betrayed. 
gifts which bring healing to the world. Healing to a world that is torn apart by sin and evil and sickness and confusion. And even though you cannot physically be here tonight to celebrate priesthood and to receive Jesus in Holy Communion, we still believe in the power of these great gifts of Jesus. That as long as we have priests, and as long as priests celebrate the Eucharist, we will have Jesus. And no evil, and no sickness, and no sin can stop the grace of Jesus from blessing our world and from blessing each one of us individually. As your priests, you are constantly in our hearts and in our prayers. As we daily celebrate the Eucharist for you, as we gather each day to pray for you in our morning prayer, in our evening prayer, in our rosary, and we entrust you and those you love to the loving heart of Jesus, who gave his life for our salvation. Priesthood and Eucharist, two amazing gifts. Jesus' response to being betrayed and handed over by his friend. May we always have a profound love and reverence for these holy gifts, and we look forward to the day when we as priests can greet you again here in our own Church of St. Anne, and we can celebrate Eucharist together to receive our Lord in Holy Communion, not a sign, not a symbol, not a representation, but truly our Lord Jesus who comes to us in the gift of the Eucharist. Pray for priests. Pray for vocations. Pray for Father Greg. Pray for Seminary and Kevin. And please pray for me. We are your priests, and we are here to serve you the best we can. And when we all come together again, it will be a day of great rejoicing as we celebrate Eucharist as God's family.